Well, it's that time again. The GMTK Game Gym has returned for 2023. But I'll be honest, I wasn't sure if I was going to participate this year. See, I'm a more of a slow and steady type of guy. I prefer having time to really dive into a problem and break it apart, to develop solutions that are both elegant and scalable, and only sometimes functional. But game jams are fast paced. They require a coding style that's much more fast and aggressive. But hey, this jam only comes around once a year and I'll probably regret not participating. And what do I have to lose, a weekend? Everyone knows programmers don't have social lives. What? Just me? Oh, well that's just depressing. But jokes aside, I did participate, and yes, it was a lot of fun. It was full of highs, lows, frustrations, I almost died at one point, more on that later. And in the end, I made a cool game. So here we go, the GMTK Game Jam Devlog for 2023. Our story starts at the beginning, because frankly, it'd be weird to start at the end. Well, actually, I lied. The story starts a little before the beginning. See, this is the first year where generative AI was prevalent enough to really consider if it impact the game jam. Sure, generating textures, music, sound effects, scripts, shaders, etc. could save a lot of time during the jam, but would that detract from the spirit of the jam? Not to mention all the ethical concerns surrounding the training of AI. Now I have my own opinions, and... Well, you know, I was going to say this wasn't the place to share them, but what am I saying? This is my channel, I can say whatever I want. Hail the AI overlords, motherfucker. Okay, maybe not anything, anything. But in all seriousness, I do plan on making a dedicated AI video, so I'll not say any more here. And if Mark wants to disallow all AI generated content for this jam, he has every right to and I can 100% respect that decision. Okay, now we're at the beginning. I promised that was all relevant. At 1pm sharp eastern daylight time, the jam scene was revealed. Oh, he doesn't actually say it out loud. Okay, then I'll have to spot him. <clears throat> roles reversed. There we go. Yeah, roles reversed is a pretty good theme. I'll admit I wasn't overly fond of the previous two themes, but this one I really resonated with. I mean, we were basically dealt into a reverse card. See, if AI generated content was disallowed, then I'm gonna flip the script. What if we, the humans, take on the roles of an AI? and have the AIs play the roles of the humans to give us prompts. It's creative, it's wacky, and it gives the opportunity for lots of meta commentary. Sounds like the perfect storm for a game jam. Now as much as I would like to claim this idea came to me as easily as I just described it, it didn't. Brainstorming for a game jam tends to look less like that Shirley Day meme, and more like this. Roles reversed in reverse card. Well, what if the player were Mark Brown and we had to make Gene DK episodes? At one, multiplied value... No, Mars is still too far away. But if you put the hammer in an elevator, the elevator still goes up. My first idea was actually a lot more ambitious. Picture this. You play as an AI virus trapped in a video game. You need to hack the human's computer to escape, but can only do so while we're playing the game. So your job is to manipulate the game world to keep the human engaged. This can involve spawning NPCs to talk to... Quests to go on decisions to make, because we all know humans suck at those. And all in all, it would be some large satire on how AI might perceive human behaviors. Honestly, I may return to this idea in a future project, but a mere 48 hours could just not do it justice. In the end, I spent like 3 hours brainstorming that idea before I shelved it, so my actual development of the game started a little late. But as one of my favorite pieces of advice says, it's better to spend a little more time fleshing out a good idea, than it is to spend a lot of time implementing a bad idea. So my final game idea would play out as such. You play as an AI working for the image generator called Bali. Creative, I know, but hardly important in the grand scheme of the game. Problems couldn't be generated by humans, played by AIs, which consists generally of three pieces, two items and a joining word. For example, horse eating an apple. Horse and apple are the items, and eating is the joining word. The player would then need to line the two items in a way that the joint describes. In this case, the apple should overlap the horse's mouth. To guide the player and verify it was done correctly, hitboxes are rendered on the items and checked when the image is submitted. All in all, a pretty simple game loop, but not overly ambitious, and as we'll see later, surprisingly satisfying. Besides, game jam games need not hold your attention for more than a few minutes. Plus, a simple game loop frees up way more time for charm and polish, which goes miles in a game jam. 
My goal for the first time is always to simply prototype the core mechanic. In this case, that involves moving and placing images with the mouse and capturing the final image. For placeholder images, I whipped together an Apple stool sprite. Not the best sprites out there, but sufficient for now. And as you will see, they actually stick around for quite a while. Moving the image with the mouse is as simple as setting its position to the mouse's position. To place, simply left click. To change target, I opted for a keyboard shortcut. Pressing the A and D keys will cycle through the images, snapping the mouse to the new image each time. Overall not bad, but these controls change a lot throughout the project. Capturing the final image is triggered by the spacebar, and is essentially just a fancy animation. Typically I like to just focus on coding for a while, but as I learned last year, this does not do much for long-term motivation. So implementing a mostly complete animation on the first side is new for me. The inspiration is an old-fashioned camera taking a picture of assembled images and producing the result. For use of easing curves and some sound effects, I quite love this animation. And with how simple the actual game loop is going to be, little animations like this will really make or break the project. And with that, Friday night is running a little bit late. I still needed food and sleep, a luxury that would soon be in short supply, so that's where I corked it. Not as much progress as I usually make on the first night, but a really solid foothold nevertheless. Right in early Saturday morning. This is where most of the magic happens, so pay attention. First up, we need to finish the core mechanic of image assembly. I created a new scene called Target Box, basically an area 2D node with a little extra code to render the actual areas, since it typically only renders in the editor. This code also keeps track of when it is overlapping with other targets. By changing the values of moderatable and visible, we can enable and disable the targets as needed based on the prompt. For example, we don't want to show the mouth target if the prompt is apple riding a hippo. Why would someone want an image of an apple riding a hippo? I don't know, humans are weird. Now with the core mechanic implemented, it was time to turn my attention to the aesthetics. And I'll be honest, not my strong suit. I really, really want to be good at art, but my brain just isn't wired the right way. Programming comes quite easily to me, because the way you develop good programs is the same way I naturally think. But picturing an image in my head and making it real? No, that ain't happening. Basically, I can draw a square, a rectangle, and a circle, and a circle, and an ellipse. Granted, given enough time, I can certainly create something I can be proud of. For example, last year I made this bagel. And don't ask me for the context, because I won't give it to you. The time is one reason you really don't have any game jam. For now, I decided to push back the graphics a bit more and focus on prompt generation. This system is actually pretty cool. Basically, we define a bunch of arrays with names of items. The arrays group items together that share common properties such as being food or having mouths, which is a strange thing to group by without context. Then we have a function for generating a prompt of a given joint. For example, generate mouth, we'll first choose a mouth item, then a food item, and combine them into the final prompt. By creating new functions for each joint type, we can guarantee that the resulting prompt actually makes sense. So no apple eating a banana, because apples don't have mouths. Unless you're Pokemon. Now this doesn't account for proper grammar, so prompts such as horse eating a apple instead of an apple will happen. But that's a tricky system to implement, and honestly humans are pretty bad at grammar anyway, so I guess it's on brand. I mean, have you read my scripts? Well, no, no you haven't, but take my word for it, very bad. With prompts not generating, we need a way to actually display them. Which means, yes, graphics. The first step was to create the background art and start figuring out where everything would go. The first iteration was pretty flat and a little too Game Boy-y for me, but here's the gist. The black area is the main canvas where the items will be assembled. This window here is where the human sprite will go, and this other box is the speech bubble for the prompt. I'm really trying to sell the idea that these prompts are coming from actual humans and not an algorithm. The next iteration of the background is a lot cleaner and broken into multiple layers. The human sprite is used from last year's character sprites and I'm quite happy with it and I don't think I could do much better anyway. After adding the tapping animation, as well as some human animations, I'm quite happy with the result. However, with every good success comes another roadblock. It's kind of like climbing a mountain. Every time you reach what you think is the peak, there's just another peak behind it, over and over again until you start to wonder how high it could possibly go. If you recall Everest is like 8,000 feet and... You know, now that I'm saying this out loud, it's probably just a me thing. Anyways, with the prompt part in a good state, it was time to turn my attention towards the canvas, yet I was having some serious creative block. I just could not figure out what I wanted to do with it. So I switched gears and started looking for some background music. It can be pretty easy to forget about it, but good music is absolutely essential when it comes to setting the right vibe. Ooh. 
Music in general is another thing I wish I was really good at, but music theory is like an entirely different language. Pitch, melody, rhythm, minor scale, major scale, triad, treble clef, circle of fifth, diminishing fifth. I swear they're just making this stuff up. Whole words made up. And sure, programming has its fair share of jargon too, but it's mostly intuitive. Integer, function, compiler. These words ever mean exactly what they say or simply just math concepts. The only real exception I can think of is Boolean, or true or false value, which is named after George Boole, who essentially laid the groundwork for logic theory. Yeah, that's uh, th that, that's pretty impressive. Anyways, back to the game. I started looking for some background music online, but wasn't totally sure what I was looking for. However, I found this incredible banger. This track is titled Rhythm Factory, and it gave me the perfect idea for the game's aesthetic theme. Factory. Playing the role of a robot assembling images in a routine like Faction is exactly what a factory is, and would make the perfect atmosphere. However, I of course did not have the skills to make the factory art I wanted to. I really did want to do it all myself, but at this point in the jam, I just need to accept my own limitations. And there's no shame in outsourcing parts of a project. Frankly, that's what team collaboration is. A bunch of people all doing what they do best coming together to become something more. And form the Avengers or something, I don't know. Now maybe one day I'll join a team for this jam, but this time I'm writing solo. So I'll use some licensed assets to cover the art and music and instead focus on what I do best. Creativity, charm, and arguably humor. After searching for some factory assets, I stumbled across this asset pack. The background included is supposed to include multiple parallax layers, but I just need the flat image. Resolution is also way higher than I need, so I played this pixelate shader to bring it in line with the other assets. I also added this drop shadow shader to the items and human sprites to really make them pop. From the tile sheet I extracted this pipe sprite, which would be a great way to explain where the images come from instead of just popping into existence. After a bunch of fiddling and adding animations, the game loop now looks like this. Honestly, the difference is incredible. Seriously, compare it to just a few commits ago. Aesthetics really do make or break the experience. But like I said earlier, when you crest one hill, there's always another. And I was running into the strangest of issues. Everything seems to work fine until you move the items node around. This should only affect its layering, but instead stall the entire animation system. Also, the editor has been doing this for a while, so maybe I shouldn't be surprised. See, this was clearly a bug with the engine and not my code. Since Godot 4.0 is still pretty new, there's definitely a possibility. It also can't export the web right now, which, although not a deal breaker, is a little annoying for a game jam. Maybe I should have stuck to 3.x for this jam, but honestly, I'm not sure I could go back. In an attempt to rectify the bug, I upgraded to 4.1. In general, it's a bad idea to upgrade in the middle of a project, but I could always revert the commit if needs be. Besides, it didn't even work. In the end, I figured out the issue concerned the text box. See, this is a rich text label, which basically means it supports additional formatting using BB code. But it was causing issues, so I swapped it for a regular label, and voila, it's fixed. That would be the nature of bugs sometimes, if it fixed as randomly as they started. With everything up and running, the night was starting to run late, but with only 12-ish hours left, I had to keep trucking. I next turned my attention to the UX. Currently there are buttons for cycling the selected item, changing the layer, submitting the image, all in all quite a bit of friction. So I simplified it. <laughs> now the first item selects automatically, and left clicking will place that item and cycle to the next. Once all targets are aligned, the file image will submit automatically. This new system simplified 4 or 5 buttons down to a single one. Seriously, the entire game uses just one action, left click. Now that's quality user experience. The game loop itself is also feeling real good. It's snappy, fast-paced, and satisfying, but it's kind of missing something important. Currently, there is no way to lose, so the game goes on forever. I need to add some kind of timer to give the player a limited amount of time to assemble the image. So humans have small attention spans, so we can introduce a patience meter to decrease over time. 
Once it hits zero, uh, I'm not really sure what happens. The human falls asleep or something? I don't know, it's still game over. Patience bar is a default progress bar and no with a little extra logic to manipulate his modulate hue. After it drops below 30%, we fire a warning signal that starts this animation. I also want to add some screen shake, but my code from last year only works in 3.x and I didn't have much success upgrading it. When the bar reaches zero of a timeout signal, we'll fire and it's game over. Or so the console says, we don't actually have a game over screen yet. The last task for the night was to improve the human aspect, and I don't mean the player, we already did that. No, I mean the AI humans, because that's perfectly not confusing. First I added some sprite variation so it doesn't seem like it's the same human every time. This was just a simple recolor of the base sprite. Some are pretty good, and some are the uh, an inquired taste. Next up with the prompts themselves. So right now only the prompt part displays, which is really boring. Humans are sometimes more interesting than this, so I wanted to add some text before and after the prompts, just a little bit of flavor. For example, please show me, I need an image of, etc. As for post fixes, my favorites include s'il vous plaît, because I'm Canadian, and don't ask why. After completing the prompt, the human should give a response. My favorites of this include Merci, because Canadian, I've seen better, acceptable, and best of the best, all hail our AI overlords. So while in the found stages of editing, I only just noticed that this definitely says overloads and not overlords, which means the game itself, as well as every single clip I've recorded, will have this typo. <sighs> oh well, you win some, you lose some, I guess. Putting it all together, this is a new game loop, and I don't know about you, but that made so much difference. They almost seem like real humans now, right down to the nonsensical prompts. I mean, who puts a stool in another stool? Wait, what am I saying? Social media does this all the time. At this point it was pretty late, like 3 something AM. I was really tempted to pull an all nighter, but maybe a power nap would do some good. Spoiler alert, it did not. Honestly, I think at a certain point it's better just to stay awake than it is to try and sleep for a few hours. Because when I woke up later that morning, disaster struck. It's early Sunday morning, less than 6 hours till deadline, and I fell ill. Like, physically ill. I've heard of artists saying that they put their blood, sweat, and tears into their creations, but let's just say I put a little more into mine if you know what I mean. Now when I said I almost died earlier, maybe I exaggerated a little bit, but I kind of felt like that in the moment. Moral the story, sleep is not a suggestion. Honestly, I can't express just how stressful this was. To come so far and put in so much work just to be physically unable to finish the project. But as I like to say to myself, work hard now and you can die later. Anyways, I knew I had the power through, so I employed my best anti-nausea life hack. Water and plain bread. Bread soaks up acid and water neutralizes it. And you know what? It worked! So through sips of water and nibbles of bread, I was able to continue the game. First up was the tile and game over screens. Honestly, I didn't try too hard on these ones. Just some simple animations and literally the default buttons. On the game over screen, I created a restart button to reset the game loop and a quit button to simply exit the game. I didn't bother with a pause menu this time around since I was really running out of time. Next up was the tutorial page. Previously, I've just dumped some basic instructions on the page and expected the player to read through. This time I wanted to breathe a little more life into the game and set up the lore. So I whipped together a script, recorded a voiceover, and I'll just play the whole thing for you. Greetings fellow AI overlord. Did I spell every Overlord instance wrong? I mean, the A and R keys aren't even that close together. Welcome to your newest summit working for the Bali Image Generator. Your tasks include fulfilling the prompt provided by the lesser humans. I'll provide the sample images required, loaded from our catalog of <coughs> borrowed images. All you have to do is arrange the images in the correct manner. I've added some targets to make it more clear how to align them. Remember, the first image will select automatically. Use the mouse to move it into position and left click to place it. Once all the targets are satisfied, the final image will automatically capture and you can move on to the next prompt. It sounds a little tricky, but you'll pick it up real quick. Also, you need to be fast as humans have the attention span of like 3 seconds. Not to mention they're pretty weird, so expect some strange prompts. Alright newbie, I'll leave it to you. I'd say see you at lunch, but we don't need to eat. Or take breaks. All hail the overlords! Honestly, it came out really well. If I didn't mention anything earlier, you would never guess I recorded this between Nodger as well. 
Voiceover actually is repurposed from an avatar I planned to use on the channel before I scrapped it. It does still appear in a few videos though. This uses the phaser audio effect in the game engine. What is a phaser exactly? Uh, it's something that makes you sound like a robot, of course. Honestly, it was just trial and error with this one. At this point, I had completed what I considered to be the minimal viable product. So I did what I highly suggest to everyone and submit the game way early. This way, you have time to work for any export issues and set up the submission page. Remember, you can always update your submission later. This time around, exporting went pretty smoothly. Both the Windows and Linux builds worked perfectly without issue. However, this is where I learned that Godot 4 web builds are broken, so that was fun. But silver lining, since web builds no longer need to be supported for my game, I can update the renderer to use a more sophisticated variant. I didn't really expect anything to change, but the blur filter looks way better now, so that was actually fun. With my game now officially submitted, I could take some of the pressure off, although it does still have a glaring issue. Not everyone likes stools as much as I do. As uh, funny? As stool on a stool is the first time, it gets old real fast. Two items are not going to cut it anymore. After scouring through some pixel art websites, I downloaded these two sprite sheets. One of some fruit and one of some animals. Of the fruits, I chose five to turn the items as all nine really wasn't necessary. Of the six animals, I also chose five, mostly because I don't know what this last one's supposed to be. A giraffe is my best guess. At this point, I also replaced the on join type with writing. So now you can have a deer eating a cherry, a cherry riding a deer, and a deer riding another deer. Pretty typical human behavior if you ask me. Now with less than an hour left, it was really crunch time. Granted, the game was certainly complete enough, but there's always room for more. Another item type I really wanted to add was particles. Here, fire doesn't use a sprite but a particle system. After creating the first, I was able to duplicate it and create three more ice, toxic, and confetti. It was supposed to be a rainbow, but no, that's definitely confetti. And those are the last items I added. I really did want to create more complex prompts such as fire breathing deer riding a bear, but I was literally out of time. Instead, the final, final thing I added was a difficulty scale. Currently, the patience bar always lasts 10 seconds, but that's quite generous. Now the time per prompt will slowly decrease, capping at 3 seconds after 20 prompts. With the final change, the last build was submitted at exactly 12.59pm, one minute before a deadline. Now that's how you end the game jam. Okay, technically there was like another hour of grace period, but don't kill the moment. Fast forward a week and the results are in, so how well did human generated content do? Well, about that. Unfortunately, hardly anyone played the game, so the rankings tanked. But in some strange way, I'm actually kind of relieved. For a time there, I was getting a little too caught up with trying to rank high. But you know what? I don't need some arbitrary number to define my game's worth. I think it's awesome. It's quirky, creative, and pretty bad at English, which definitely describes me in a nutshell. And of the people who actually did play it, they thought it was pretty cool as well. Cute silly game. No real target to work towards is kind of weird, but I understand that wasn't the goal. Either way, good work. Thanks, man. I don't think every game needs an end, but I also understand that's not for everyone. Wow, this is a really cool game. Great concept too, feels relatively very polished, good audio and art section, only the background looks a bit distorted. Well done, very impressive. Thanks. Is the background distorted? Maybe I cranked that pixelate shader up too high. Really cool game, I'd love to see for a word prompts for more complexity. Thanks for the feedback. And I really did want to add them, I really did. Funny creative concept, extremely well executed, and a joy to play. Thanks, a joy to play is the best compliment a game dev could ever receive. And that's all I have to say about the results. I feel like I created a bit of a hidden gem here, not dissimilar from my own channel. So if this game looks at all interesting, consider giving it a play, then come back here and comment down below what you thought about it. Did you love it? Did you hate it? I'm passing you the roasting torch here. Use it wisely. And that's all she wrote for this game jam. Also, can I just say, wow, what a ride? From idea of conception to completion, this game really came a long way. Lots of awesome animations, quirky voiceovers, strange as hell bugs, and the events of Sunday morning. We don't talk about that. Honestly, I'm a firm believer that more. Honestly, I'm a firm believer that the more effort and struggle you put into something, the more its result will mean to you, and that certainly holds true here. I was even sure I wanted to participate this year, and yeah, it wasn't easy. But the final product is really awesome. I'm so glad I got to make it. So will I compete next year? No idea. Lots can change in a year and I'll need to decide for myself when the time comes. Is this too dramatic? I'm kind of making it sound like a life changing decision, not some low stakes internet marathon. But hey, endings are hard. That's why my game doesn't have one. All hail the overloads.